Hey guys, how we doing today? So, quick uh, impromptu type of video for the daily briefing today. It's been a, a long one running the farm by myself today, so I have to keep it short and to the point. Um, got a question that was really good and I'll use for the topic here, was do we own the land that our farm is on? And to answer the question quickly, uh, no, it is not. We lease the farm. And I'll give you a little details on that. Um, unless you are kind of born into land or you win the lottery somewhere or you sign up for an insane amount of debt, you're not buying any significant amounts of acreages um, where we are in Virginia at least that can be uh, supported and paid for by the agricultural activities that you are doing on that property. Where we are here in Virginia... Uh, farmland runs anywhere from eight to twelve thousand dollars an acre, and I know in some places of the country it's more than that. In some places it's a lot less. Let's take for example, if we were to purchase a two hundred acre farm at ten thousand dollars an acre, obviously that's two million dollars. The mortgage payment on that at about what today's rates would be four percent is going to come out to ten thousand dollars a month just for the mortgage payment. So you can imagine the financial stress that that can put on a starting business, even a fully uh, functioning business to make that $120,000 a year as your uh, land cost. Because if you remember, the land is not what makes money. It's what you do on the land. You follow what I'm saying with that? So if we are devoting that much money just to our land cost, that really hinders us on the other areas of the business that need attention. We won't have money for capitalizing expansion, it'll really crunch cash flow. And I think it's largely impossible to start a livestock farm um, in today's markets, even with direct to retail and the value added that we're making on those animals. I don't think we could carry that kind of drain on our cash flow. So we lease the farm that we are on. And then there's a lot of ways that you can do leases. Um, there's anything from the handshake lease all the way up through 50 pages of uh, you know, legally drawn up documents. Uh, we've been fortunate though to with the farm that we have here to work with a landowner where we have a very long-term lease. In fact, it's a lifetime lease. And every five years we can renegotiate the terms of that um, and arrive at a new agreement. If we can't agree on it, it stays the way it was. And there's opt-out clauses for both parties, but we have spread the, the risk um, and the kind of hassle factor of breaking it up to where there's a healthy relationship uh, and tension between both parties. So as we are doing things on the farm, we are, you know, if we're spending money on hard costs, things that are permanent infrastructure to the farm, that is going into a capitalization schedule um, that gets updated every year that's winding down on a 20-year clock. And so that amount is sitting out there that if the landowner were to ask us to leave, we have one year to leave the farm and they have to refund us the current amount of the depreciation schedule, whatever it happens to be for that year. The uh, kind of risk that we carry is if we decide to leave, um, you know, if we throw in the towel on the farming thing or if we you know, find somewhere else that we want to go, we are walking on that money that we have sunk into the place. So it builds this trust with each other um, and it builds shared risk and a, a shared um, you know, hassle factor should either party. It, it gives us incentive to figure things out and to get along with each other. And we've had a great relationship with these people for nine years now. Now, owning land does not, in my opinion, make economic sense it 100% makes emotional sense. Even with a great relationship that we have with these people, um, you know, there are things that you don't want to have to, you know, consult with someone else to do. You just want to be able to do it. And if you own the land, you can do that. When you lease land, you have to have meetings, you have to work things out, and uh, you'll have a little bit of a negotiation process for expansion that you want to do, new buildings, roads, you know, things like that. Um, so for those who do own land, that's great. I have nothing against it but I'm having to approach this from the economic angle of how do we make this work when we have a business that needs to pay all the bills. 
remember we don't have off farm income supplementing our you know our farm income the, the farm business has to pay for everything and it cannot pay for that cost of land ownership it can pay for leasing it now to give some contrast here <clears throat> the huge disparity that's between the cost to buy land versus the cost to lease it uh, crunching the numbers on what pasture land rents for us uh, you know around this area we could lease this farm for 300 years for the pr same price as purchasing it now obviously you know we don't have the asset at the end of all that and uh, I you know appreciate that but the discussion of land ownership becomes almost a separate entity from the farm operation that is operating on the land and for uh, you know, people getting into agriculture, such as my wife and I, we are first generation farmers. We did not have land coming down, um, you know, through the years from family. We didn't have a business that we could use the equipment from. If we went out and bought a piece of land, we were having to start from square one with every, you know, with nothing and building everything up. Um, so that's why we, you know, decided to work in a lease arrangement instead of buying. So, you know, on the one hand, you can buy it for $10,000 an acre. On the other, you can lease it for $50 an acre. And it's up to your ability to foster these relationships with landowners to have these arrangements and to build in this mutual trust, um, you know, and a respect with each other. I think it is a model that disagree or agree, like it or not, this is a model that a lot of young farmers coming into the space are going to have to um, probably employ as they try to build their businesses is having these relationships with existing landowners. That way your capital is free to invest into the operation and it has a more, uh, you know, more liquidity to it than being tied up in the piece of land. So long reply to a short question there. We do not own one acre of land. We have farmed for 10 years without owning one acre of land and we have built a successful farm business without doing so by having strong relationships with landowners, uh, looking for what their needs are, you know, catering what we do to support them and building this as a relationship. So would we like to own land someday? Of course, it might happen you know, sooner rather than later, I don't know. But for now, it's not a necessary element of a farming enterprise. And don't let it hold you back if you don't have land. You can find people who are looking for young farmers to come in and do something on their land if you are willing to maybe move somewhere or work with their needs on their specific piece of property. So hope you took a few nuggets away from that, guys. We will catch you tomorrow. Got some snow coming in tonight, so it should be interesting. Last little blast of winter here, hopefully. We have turkeys coming into our brooder next week, so we'll be talking more about that. Our poultry season is about to kick off. Spring is almost here. It's time to get after it.